Dear students, welcome to Bluepen Online. Shall we begin? Please use headset, pen and paper to take notes. Here you go. Please let's know your feedback after class. Next we'll discuss about the most important part of the chapter that is early childhood caries. So there are different terms for referring to early childhood caries. It is also called as uh, infancy caries, nursing bottle caries, baby bottle tooth decay, likewise early childhood caries and severe early childhood caries uh, for the severe form. Then in classification, we had seen that there are different types of caries like rampant caries, nursing caries. So you have to know the difference between what is a rampant caries and nursing caries. You should not get it confused. Rampant caries means it is very rapid, widespread and acute type. So there will be sudden spread and suddenly you will be noticing it. And it will be found in all ages, primary teeth also in case of permanent dentition also. But the main difference is usually in this case, mandibular incisors will also be involved. So it will have an etiology like multifactor etiology. And the treatment indicated is usually pulp therapy and the prevention can be by dental health education. Whereas in nursing caries or the early childhood caries, it's a specific form of rampant caries. This is commonly found in infants and toddlers, whereas rampant caries can be found in any age group and commonly found in primary dentition. And maxillary incisors and molars are commonly involved and mandibular incisors are very rarely involved except in cases where it is severe form of early childhood caries. And why mandibular incisors are not involved is mainly because there is pooling of saliva. Saliva has got a renalizing property and also clearance and cleansing action. Then the etiology will be bottom fading, pacifiers, dipped in honey or at will breastfeeding. Treatment can be done using topical flora, especially in case of initial lesions like white spot lesions and followed by maintenance of teeth and then the health education act as preventive measures. So coming to definition, uh, Davis has given one definition, but uh, please do remember the AAPD definition. That is, early childhood caries is the presence of one or more decayed with non cavitated or cavitated lesions missing due to caries or filled tooth surfaces in any primary tooth in a child less than 71 months of age or younger. Okay, so it will be either one or more decayed, missing, or filled tooth, no matter it is cavitated or non cavitated. And in children younger than three age, years of age, any sign of smooth surface caries is indicative of severe childhood caries. And from ages three through five, one or more cavitated missing or filled smooth surfaces in primary maxillary anteriority or a decayed missing or filled score of more than four in age three, more than five in age four or more than six in age five surfaces constitute smooth surface smooth sorry severe early childhood caries coming to the classification of early childhood caries there are three types type 1 type 2 and type 3 so this classification is given by Vayne and uh, type 1 is mild to moderate type type 2 moderate to severe and type 3 is a severe so in type 1 mild to moderate the lesions will be usually isolated. It may involve uh, molars and incisors and number of caries teeth increases as cariogenic challenge persists and causes usually a combination of cariogenic semi-solid food and lack of oral hygiene. Usually seen in 2 to 5 years old. Type 2 is moderate to severe. In this case, labiolingual carious lesions affecting maxillary incisors. Mandibular incisors are not affected and use of uh, feeding bottle or at will breastfeeding or a combination of both with or without poor oral hygiene and uh, seen soon after eruption of teeth type 3 is severe form in this case carious lesions affecting all the teeth including lower incisors are included causes cariogenic food and poor oral hygiene and condition is rampant so how you can differentiate between type 2 and type 3 is mandibular incisors will be involved in case of severe form 
and uh, type 1 and type 2 how you can differentiate especially here there will be only isolated carious lesions whereas in case of uh, type 2 uh, labial various multiple teeth will be involved development the stages of each you see so there are four stages the first one is the initial reversible stage from 10 to 18 months there will be no pain in this case but cervical in oca- occasionally interproximal areas of chalky white demyelination it's just chalky white demyelination so it's called as reversible stage stage 2 is damaged carious lesion 18 to 24 months in this case lesion in maxillary anterior teeth and it will spread to dentin and show a large brown discoloration and the patient might have pain on having cold food items stage 3 is deep lesion 24 to 36 months so in this case depending on the time of eruption cariogenicity of sweetener and frequency of its use this stage can be reached in 10 to 14 months also and molars will be included and uh, frequent complaint of pain and pulp involvement in maxillary incisor is noted stage 4 traumatic stage ranging from 36 to 48 months in this case teeth become so weakened by caries that relatively small forces can fracture them and parents may report a history of trauma molars are now associated with pulpal problems and maxillary incisors become non-vital so these are the different stages of early childhood caries 